Hello mudlarking friends, now here we are once again nice and early, you can see just behind me there the tide has hardly gone down at all so we've got hours and hours here. straight into the metal zone. Pottery people, don't worry, we've got some of that coming up too, but first let's get close to the ground and see what goodies we can turn up. And we're straight in with a happy sight indeed. I haven't had one of these in an absolute age. It's a little squished, but can you make out what it is? Yep, it's a button. See right there, you can make out the shank, bent backwards and into the button itself but do you know what type of button it is? It's a blowhole or vent hole button. See the ventilation holes there? Now here are some I found earlier. Mid 1600s to mid 1700s copper alloy blowhole buttons. Made from two pieces, the back piece with the vent holes or blow holes and the convex face piece. These buttons have this vent or blow hole in the back for allowing gas and heat to escape while the face of the button was soldered or brazed onto the back and then the shank was brazed on. So these are rather lovely globular, chunky globular buttons. It's always a joy to find these. So what else do we have down here? This is the type of thing I want to see. Little metal items, not too heavy, not too big. Lots of lead type in this sandy patch too. Remember, things are naturally sorted by size and weight, so even finding little modern washers like this is a great sign. And there we go, the coin patch has been found. Modern coins, sure enough, but where there are modern coins, there might well be old coins. So what's this one then? Nice colour to it. And okay, it's an aluminium bronze 1976 5 centimes, five cents, five French cents. And it's featuring a handsome looking Marianne wearing her Frisian cap on the obverse. And that's engraved by sculptor Henri Larifoul. The reverse there, that's engraved by Adrien Diodon. And it shows a grain sprig and a laurel branch. Here's the patch I'm currently looking through. And you can see my little line here that I'm working along. So I've just picked up more lead type, modern coins, a button shank. Pretty sure some more bits and pieces will come up. I'm following this line here. And there's lots of pins in here too. This patch has also produced some little lead tokens and a large pin twist. And as I've mentioned before, it's commonly accepted that these wire twists held different sized pins, which were sold in bundles. Here's a strange little hollow cast fragment, perhaps a horse's head or body at some point, but not really enough to go on. Now you're really gonna laugh at this one, but I adore old safety pins, quite niche, I know. But these simple wire twist safety pins are lovely. So what's lurking under here? Ah, it's got to be a euro. There we go, one spendable euro, thank you very much. Weirdly, it's got some paint on the side here, possibly a bit of a reach, but maybe this was decorated and thrown in the river for good luck, who knows? Ah, there we go, it's an Irish euro. This is designed by Jarlath Hayes. He's an Irish typography and graphic designer. Okay, lots more lead type here and, oh, not again. Why does this keep happening to me? It's a buckle 
fragment yet again. A tantalising fragment of what looks to have once been a rather tasty buckle. Oh well, never mind, one day. All right, so here's a clutch of metal. And I'm just gonna get done here and take a look over in this area closer to the water for a minute. Hmm, curious. Have you ever seen a slice of marble that looks like thick bacon? You have now. I've got to be honest with you here. I have no idea where or when this has come from. I know it's stone or marble cladding, and it looks marvellous when wet and shiny. Possibly a fascia of a, a building or interior. But other than that, I have no idea. So as ever, let me know what you think in the comments section, please. All right, back down to the metal zone. Now here we go. It's a medieval to post-medieval shoe buckle, annular in shape, and the pin here has been stuck in the open position. Cute little thing and quite a common find. Now this lead off cut here, perhaps a little weight. Another tantalisingly pretty little fragment, otherwise known as a partifact. Yep, that means part of an artifact. All right, here we go. A saucy looking pipe bowl stuck fast in the mud. Love this. Any chance of a stem? Not likely in this spot, but we'll see. Ah, oh, nice bowl, no stem. I'm holding out hope for another though. I've got a feeling in my bones. Okay, we've got a nice little bit of ceramic here, a whiteware jug handle fragment. And here's an interesting tile fragment. The pick hole here is curiously triangular in shape, which isn't such a common find. Now, they date from the same time as the round and square peg hole tiles, which is medieval to post-medieval, broadly 1300 to 1900. But this triangular peg hole is a little unusual, and therefore this is a definite keeper to put in my garden at home. A little scrap of Staffordshire slipwear here and you can see the fabric peeping through underneath the worn slip. Okay, let's take a trip over to the other side now. And I'm in the Sagar department, also known as the place where I find my chunky kiln furniture fragments. And whoa, Nelly, what is, here we go, what appears to be the base or side of the inside of a kiln, perhaps. And this circular stoneware shape here looks like a Sagar fragment. This really is a hefty piece of kiln remains. Here's a Tudor brick fragment. Love a piece of Tudor brick. You can see here where it's been manipulated into shape and the missing piece would have been here. Pipe stem here, no bowl, but I'm still holding out hope for a bowl and a good bit of stem today all together, even in the most unlikely of places. We'll pop that back in there. Aha, and a piece of medieval a Flemish floor tile. Ooh, and a totally squished pipe bowl. I think that's just taken a heavy foot on top of it there and it's crushed. Oh, a hefty jawbone. Wow, with these teeth intact here, I love this. I'm gonna leave this one in the foreshore, but I have a number of these at home. Guessing this is a horse jaw? Not sure.
and an absolutely textbook piece of stoneware, bright umber salt glaze. It's such an orange peel kind of texture, so a nice chunk of salt glazed stoneware. And I knew it. I knew we'd have a pipe coming to us today. Keep your fingers and toes crossed, guys. All right, only a relatively short piece of stem, but let's see what's going on with the bowl. Nicely wedged in there. Shift this off, looking good. We've got a beauty, look at that. The darkness there is staining by the mud. So that's from the mud there and where it's been sitting in there. And wow, that's nice. This is a early to late 18th century pipe. And there are some maker's marks on the flat bottom heel and they read WS. I took this pipe home, obviously, and let it dry out. Guess what I found lurking at the bottom of the mud plug inside the bowl? Yep, that's right, 200 plus year old tobacco. Hopefully you can make out the colour and texture difference there, but underneath the mud you have burnt tobacco. Pretty cool, I love seeing this. All right, and I love doing this. Look at the hole it's left behind, a perfect mold of the pipe. And what's this, another bowl sticking up? I can tell this is an earlier one by the shape. And oh, how funny, it's broken in half. Check out the cross section and how thick the walls of the bowl are, it's crazy. Another one lurking under here, mid to late 17th century. And another very broken bowl and later in date too. This is 18th like the stem and bowl I just found. So lots of pipe fragments in a very small area here. Now remember that Victorian bottle dump we looked at a few weeks back? I've headed back there to see the latest in terms of erosion. And here it is. You can see this long strip going up to the back and underneath the white stones of the barge bed here and there's lots and lots of glass shards poking out of the mud. So here's a fragment of a Bailey stoneware jar made in Fulham. and a T. Smith jar made in the Canal Potteries, Old Kent Road. Now both jars contain food or drinks such as pickles and ginger beer. And here's a little teaser of what turned out to be my find of the day. Any ideas? It's an absolute corker. Recognise it now? There was a clue in the pun there. That's right, it's a broken bottleneck with cork and lead seal or capsule intact. I've never seen one of these bottles with an intact lead seal before and I am so excited about it. This neck and seal fragment was once part of a tall stoneware Apollinaris mineral water bottle dating to circa 1860. Apollinaris, now owned by Coca-Cola, was a hugely popular German mineral water company started by George Kreuzberg in the German spa town Bad Neuenahr. Kreuzberg discovered a naturally effervescent spring in his vineyard in 1852, bottled it and named it after St Apollinaris. By 1895 they were known as the Queen of Mineral Waters and in 1913 were producing 40 million bottles of water a year, with 90% of it being exported worldwide. Needless to say, those figures show you how common it is to find Apollinaris bottles, like the one I have here. But I have never before found one with the cork and lead seal still intact. 
I'm pleased as punch with this find and love that it brings together the finding of metal and ceramic in perfect harmony. Now here we have three little complementary blue and white pot shards. Hand painted Chinese export here. A piece of transferware and a small rectangular piece of salt glazed stoneware, either scratch blue or Westerwald and that is my favourite piece. Now, you know my love of worked bone. I can't resist it. And sure enough, these marks here could be made by an inexperienced butcher, but I don't think so. Ever romantic, I think they are tally marks, counting marks, or some attempted decoration of a tool, perhaps. In any case, I'm saying these are intentional, man-made marks on a piece of animal bone. And here we go, our last find of the day is the earliest in date. It's a little fragment of Roman hypercourse tile, lovely. I've got a bonus section for you this week from the town of Hastings. You know the one, the battle and all that. Well, I took a little trip down there to see some friends and whilst I was there, managed to get a glimpse at the wreck of the Indium in Amsterdam, which is a pretty special thing indeed. Check this out. This is the wreck of the Indiaman Amsterdam, who on her 1749 maiden voyage from Texel to Batavia, now Jakarta, lost her rudder at Pevensey and came aground at Bulverhithe. By the time distress signals were fired, there was mutiny on board, not least because, prior to the storms and rudder loss, around 50 of the crew had already died from an unknown epidemic thought to be yellow fever, and another 40 were ill and dying. With crew and officers in confrontation, the rudderless vessel carrying valuable commodities and at least 20 boxes of silver gilder coins was abandoned at Bulverhithe. Local people watched as the captain, entire crew and passengers came ashore. Plunder and intrigue followed, with the uncommonly named Captain Clump having barely left the ship before silver was stolen from his cabin and the military were called in to stop the thieving. What you see here is the part of the 44 metre vessel that is visible, plus metal girder protection at the seaward end. This wreck is a protected historic site since 1974 and the best preserved Dutch East India Company vessel in the world. Two thirds of the vessel sits below the lowest spring tide mark in the sand over clay and prehistoric forest below. Since the Amsterdam's rediscovery in 1969, excavation work was carried out and a number of finds are on display at the Shipwreck Museum, Rockenor, Hastings. There are now plans to re-excavate the wreck and return it to the Netherlands to be displayed in an underwater museum called Docking the Amsterdam. If you would like to see the Amsterdam poking out of its prehistoric seabed forest, September the 9th and October the 9th are good lows. It's not always visible, so you have to get there when you've got a good spring tide. The Shipwreck Museum are doing a guided walk, which will be well worth booking in for, details of which I will include in the video description here. All right, well, back to jolly old London and we're done for today, but a few words before I go. All right, guys, so we did have some good metal bits and bobs today after all. Lovely blowhole button, haven't had one of those for a while. What I like the most about today is that the river gave me metal, but it also gave me a metal and ceramic combo with that lid, the Apollinaire bottle. So I came down here wanting to find metal, found metal, also found metal, and pottery at the same time. Anyway, I'm babbling. I've kind of lost it now, guys. I've been out here for about six hours. So until next time, 